homebrewers, welcome. Hope you're having a fantastic one. So it is a one video week, um, mostly because I got called into work on my day off. So um, yeah, that was pretty much it. So what we're doing today is fusing two things that I've done in the past together to hopefully make something pretty fantastic and quick because we like quick. So I have made jam wine in the past and in fact I have made blackcurrant jam wine. I was thinking about making a uh, raspberry jam because I haven't tried raspberry jam. We tried strawberry and blackcurrant but never raspberry. But uh, I don't think that's going to go with what I have planned. So I'm going to try and make a blackcurrant port using four jars of jam and then we're going to fortify it just like the Portuguese did um, with brandy because that is how you make a fortified wine. Now you can use a whiskey or a vodka, you can use all sorts, but um, brandy works the best, let's be honest. And because brandy, uh, not brandy, because port is actually slightly sweetened as well, you can drink it as soon as it's made. So I have made port in the past, I have made jam wine, put them both together and we should be able to make a gallon of rather nice blackcurrant port rather quickly and that should be really tasty and quick to make so it's just a win 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 now for those that haven't seen the jam wine video the original uh, i do believe i have some videos on it so i'll stick them up there so you can have a look so um for those that don't know jam it is literally the perfect kit wine i've been using tesco value jam the cheapest of the cheap um, to make rather nice fruit wines. And um, yeah, so I don't see why this spa version of blackcurrant jam isn't gonna do exactly the same. I am gonna try something a little bit different because I'm curious. The preserving agents in the jam, you can boil them off for boiling your jam solution in water for about 15 minutes-ish. That's the standard rate. But I was having a little look on here and one of the acidity regula regulators uh, slash preservatives other than of course sugar is citric acid and sodium citrate. Sodium citrate is kind of the main ingredient uh, ingredients in cranberry juice so you know it's also in those cystitis things so if you, you, those who know know. So I'm curious if we just add water to it, hot water, instead of um, boiling it is that going to negate its properties just like with honey. Because, you know, honey in a jar never goes off. It may go hard, but it never goes off. It's not until you add water to it and change the concentration of that sugar ratio. And we're gonna find out, because I'm curious, I wanna know, and if it doesn't work, if it doesn't start fermenting, I will come back and we will boil the living hell out of it and then repitch the yeast and try again. So, um, yeah. That's exactly what we're gonna do. So I have four jars of jam, and all the math is already pre-done. So according to this jar, there are 50 grams of sugar in 100 grams of this, times that by 4.5, that is, you know, and times it by four, because that's how many jars we're using, that is 900 grams of sugar. I am going to be using one of these bad boys. So then we divide it by five, that works out per five liters as 180 grams of sugar, which should give us a potential alcohol level, working in a percentage of about 10 and a half percent, give or take, you know, whatever we do that. 10 and a half percent isn't bad, a fortified wine slash port, it's 20 something, so we will do the math once that is done. But um, I'll put that to the side because we want to keep the stero because I'm lazy. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna boil the kettle and we're gonna get started. So the kettle is just boiled and I'm gonna be using a little container that has got a pouring funnel, just a, a pouring spout, just to make my life easier when I put it in a five liter, soon to become demijohn. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add all four jars of jam. Mm, I do like blackcurrant jam. I'm gonna add all four jars inside our lovely proxy. So that's just, <laughs> that is, oh yeah, that's, that's the good stuff.
right? So I've got my kettle that I have boiled. I'm going to add in some water in here. The amount doesn't matter as long as it's less than what you're going to put in the demijohn. This is basically just to break up all of that jammy goodness. And since we're testing the theory of, you know, do I really need to boil or can I just add more water? I mean, it smells like blackcurrant jam and it does make quite a nice red wine just off the bat on its own, so... Break up the lumps. And a little bit in here. Tastes like, uh, kind of smells like, what you call it, Ribena, almost as if it's made with black currants. Ooh. Guess what? Boiling water is hot. So that's just basically done. I have stirred it until the bulk of the chunks are gone. We still have some of the fruity particles in here because it does actually have real fruit in it. So there are a couple of berries in there. So we're gonna have to leave this to cool down. So we're gonna come back for me tomorrow. Otherwise we could, um, you could come back in a few hours once this is cooled down because we're gonna have to add pectolase to it to get rid of the haze. And plus, we don't really want to make alcoholic jam. We want to make wine. So, uh, pectolase. We're going to come back for that. But it, it needs to be under 20 degrees. And this is, this is still up at about 80 degrees. So, yeah, that's tough. So, uh, yeah, I will see you right now. And there we go. So, it has now cooled down. Uh, for me, I left it overnight because, well, I had work in the morning. So, I've come back and we now have... Uh, semi-liquid stuff. It's actually rather thick. It's sort of got like jelly lumps in it, which is, um, yeah, it's interesting. So we are going to be adding pectolase. That will break down all of those jelly-like things. The pectin. So we're now going to add it into our lovely fermenter. So I used about two and a half liters, approximately according to this, of liquid. So I'm going to remove the same volume, slightly more, out of this with a measuring jug. So keep it in there. So let's just take out two, uh, about two and a half, three liters. We can always top it up a bit. And since this is a fresh bottle, it's sterile. And that should be over two and a half liters of liquid. I have now removed with a measuring jug. So uh, now the hard part, I'm gonna put it in here for planning. It's got a spout. Add a touch in. Where is my spoon? This one, but I need this one. I'm gonna get another one. It's actually got quite a lot of black currants in there. We have got her jam black currant solution. It does taste like black currants. In our fermenter. Now we are gonna have to shake the living bejesus out of it, so just to make sure everything is mixed. And as much of that jelly-esque stuff is uh, mixed in with as much water as we can. But we're gonna go ahead and add in some yeast nutrient. We want a good strong fermentation, so approximately one teaspoon of that. And uh, I also have pectolase 
you know, the enzyme that breaks down pectin, which uh, you use in jam to make it thick and take away the haze in wines and things. We're using that to do exactly what it's supposed to. Uh, so we couldn't have added it in when it was hot because, well, it's an enzyme. It denatures under temperature. So is it one or two? Two teaspoons. There we go. And this is a teaspoon size, so there we go. Beautiful. And as this ferments, this will slowly do its thing. And we should end up with not jelly or jam and uh, in theory, a clear wine once it's done. So in that goes again. I'm gonna clean this up because I've got jam everywhere and, uh, and shake it, so. Now let's get to the hard part, shaking it. So I've let the froth die down. I've added a little bit more water just to bring it somewhere very close to the five liter mark. Cause well, it's a five liter water container and that's the advantage of using it. Okay, it's plastic, but you get that extra half a liter and um, I want the extra. So the only thing that I have actually had to sterilize apart from my sides, cause I'm just OCD is my hydrometer. So it's been done both sides, turned it over halfway got my nice clean water just to get rid of the sterilizing solution. So uh, let's pop this in and let's see what we get. So there we are, the hydrometer is nice and stable and it is saying that it is around 12 and a half percent. So pop that one up, it's literally right there. Ooh. So I'm gonna call it 1.076, if you want to be exact. So 1.076, so that is a little bit higher than I was expecting, but at the same time, jam. <laughs> we were just working off the maths on the side of the jar. It's an approximate figure, it's standardized, so that is basically what it is. That That's what it is, 12 and a half in a five liter water container. So it's time to pitch the yeast. Now you can use any yeast you want, a universal wine yeast, a cider yeast, whatever takes your float, whatever takes your float, whatever takes your fancy, whatever. So I'm gonna be using a red fruit wine yeast, which is the GV11 made by Gervin, uh, just because, well, uh, I'm gonna be making some port out of this, but the excess bottles we can make into wine and you know, why not red fruits, red wine, makes sense. So it is a five gram pack, which is enough to make a five gallon batch. Uh, so if you want to be specific on how much to put in, it's a gram, but this is making homebrew wild and cheap. You just sort of throw a bit in and jobs are good. So all I got to do now is put my lid on, make sure it's got a bit of play in the lid while it's still hooked on. And that's just done guys. We're, that was really straightforward. So we are going to get to see if we actually need to heat up to get rid of the preservatives inside the jam, or will it just ferment? I don't know. Uh, that is that's sort of like my little thing that I wanted to see, because if you can just mix this in with water straight away and then ferment it and it doesn't taste bad, because sometimes it gives some weird flavors, that would be amazing, because it's just a kit wine ready to go, straight out the go. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Look for some other ones, you know, all those things that people tell you to do. But most importantly, carry on homebrewing. See you later.